Hello, welcome to the 40th anniversary of Nebraska Nurse Practitioners. We are so glad that you joined us tonight. The Nebraska Nurse Practitioners was founded by a small group of nurse practitioners. The organization grew from an interest group in 1979 to a formal organization in 1982, then expanded over the past 40 years to represent over 2,500 nurse practitioners in Nebraska. The purpose of the organization is to promote, develop, and support the role of the nurse practitioner within the state of Nebraska through high standards of clinical practice, professional leadership and representation, legislation affecting healthcare, continuing education, and peer support. Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. This describes the Nebraska Nurse Practitioner Organization, and this is our story. How did nurse practitioners come to be in Nebraska? We have a story. My name is Sister Mary Kay Maher, and I'm a retired family pediatric nurse practitioner. And my name is Mary Newman, and I'm a retired women's healthcare nurse practitioner. And I'm Sally Jokins. I'm a retired women's health nurse practitioner. And I worked as a PNP for six wonderful years in San Antonio, Texas. When I had to move to uh, Nebraska, I wanted to contact other nurse practitioners, and I got the name of Mary Newman, who responded to my uh, questions about nurse practitioners in Nebraska. And she said that they were interested in legislation. That wasn't really a big deal or a big surprise to me because I had been involved in some legislation in Texas about expanding the licensure and the role of nurse practitioner in Texas. But when I got here, I found out that I had misunderstood Mary and I thought we were in the process of better legislation when I found out there was no licensure for nurse practitioners in Nebraska. So I had a professional meltdown. So here I came from Texas to Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome to the good life. No practice for me. But I knew the only option I really wanted was to practice, and therefore I joined these pioneer colleagues of mine and went into working with legislation for licensure as a nurse practitioner in Nebraska. I um, was reminded of this ad from the American Journal of Nursing. It's in 1958. It's an advertisement for a hormone replacement therapy. At the bottom of the page, it reads, the journal presents pharmaceuticals for information only. Nurses understand that only physicians can prescribe. That struck me to show how far we've come from Florence only to be at that level in 1958 and now where we are. The group formed together and had a about 10 people that came to the first meeting. And we, through various contacts, determined that there were maybe 20 nurses practicing in Omaha and Lincoln and three in greater Nebraska. Approaching the Health and Human Services informally, several of us discovered that they thought the role sounded useful and worthwhile. They asked us what we wanted to, to gain, and we said, well, we wanted licensure, but we didn't really know specifics of it. So they directed us back to the Board of Nursing and the State Health Department. They had their first meeting, and a core of us were invited to attend the meeting, but we were instructed to sit along the wall and not speak. In 1982, the CRNA bill was passed, and they became licensed. The committee met again to look at the nurse practitioner role. Now, during all of these hearings that we attended uh, with the Board of Nursing and the Health Department and the legislature, I was told when I testified at one hearing by the, someone from the Board of Nursing that we were practicing medicine and they could not help us. Um, after one of the committee meetings, a physician said to me that over my dead body, will there be no nurse practitioners? So you can see the challenge that we had. I had never read a, a bill. I didn't know anything about the process. But being frustrated, I got a copy of the nurse anethodist bill to see what we should be trying to do. And I modified it for nurse practitioners. I then took it to Sheila Shishula, who was assistant dean of nursing at Creighton at the time, and also on this committee, and had been a supporter for us. And I asked her if she would look at it and see if that would possibly be something the committee would accept. She presented it to the committee, and they approved it much to my shock. Delight. <laughs> delight. Yeah, delight, but I was, I was stunned. I mean, I knew nothing. And in 1984, the bill passed with no dissent and became law. Then the work really started. A door cracked open here in Nebraska with legalization and recognition of nurse practitioners. 
who can and will walk through that door. I met Mary Newman. I found myself on a trek away from the view of nursing as a job and toward nursing as a profession. I was intrigued by the idea that I could become a family planning specialist and nurse practitioner to provide women's exams and counseling for our family planning patients. The ability to provide that care in an extended role became limited due to the lack of legislation. Mary Newman told me about the interest group. When I joined that interest group, I met a master's prepared nurse practitioner, Sister Mary Kay. As we worked to legalize nurse practitioners in Nebraska, I knew full well that any legislation was going to require me to get further education. UNMC and Creighton Colleges of Nursing then began to develop and advanced practice programs that were accessible to nurses throughout Nebraska. And the doors opened for NPs to show their worth and to their patients and to their communities. The pioneers stay involved as much as possible. Some acted as, became officers in the group, but many were also doing committee participation, conference organizers, lobbying those senators even more, legislative committee presenters, fundraisers, thought provokers. In one manner or another, we help prepare for the next round of legislation to address the barriers to our practice, such as the practice agreement, prescriptive authority, financial reimbursement, and national title licensure consistency. We would like to acknowledge the other pioneers that worked diligently along the way, including, but not limited to, Georgie Evans, Carla Domgard, Loretta Munger, Diane Lesh, Karen Knapp, Barb Morton, Debbie Conley, and Jane Pearson. We apologize if our pioneer minds have failed to remember the correct spelling and or names of others. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, present the history of NPs in Nebraska. Uh, I came to Omaha to become Dean of the College of Nursing at the Medical Center. And uh, I had been here a few years when the practitioner programs began opening, but we had none in the state. And uh, I tried hard to recruit because the Associate Dean for Graduate Programs wrote a grant and we needed a director. She wanted to start a, a nurse practitioner program in Kearney, uh, a, a family nurse practitioner to help in rural areas, which made a lot of sense and it was funded. It was just too difficult to recruit nurse practitioners who had qualifications to do teaching. And uh, so I finally decided and asked the graduate dean if I could prepare some of our own faculty as nurse practitioners. And uh, I asked the faculty about it, if they would be willing to take the courses, but I had to bring in outside faculty from schools <laughs> all around uh, to at least evaluate them and to do some of the teaching. Rosalie Yeworth recruited me um, from Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and I remember my husband Roger and I sitting there opening a map because she wanted me to move to Kearney. And uh, we were going, where is Kearney, Nebraska? <laughs> And um, she called three times before she finally got me to show up. I really did have a, a vision for it that was about being in, you know, out of rural Nebraska, but touching all parts of Nebraska. The physician assistant program was very strong. It had been in place for a long time. The role was well established. And so we had to go out and say, we're different. We bring something else to the table and please consider us. And that's what we did. There's new data from in the last five, 10 years. Physicians, family practice physicians, are there, the numbers are going down. PAs, the numbers going down the same way, and nurse practitioners are going up. And I just believe that we should be the provider of choice for primary care in the future of this country. I love, even today, and I don't practice much, but I walk out of a room working with a patient and I'm wired, still wired, 45 years later. And so it's a blessing and a gift, and I hope that everybody hearing this will be blessed with the same sense of, of uh, enrichment from this life choice. So in 1992, there were nine students accepted into the University of Nebraska Med Center's first NP program, and it was also the first here in the state of Nebraska. 
Dr. Pat Lindley, Dr. Kate Fiant, and Diane Lesh were uh, some of the first uh, instructors in the program. They believed that it was vital that we be involved in our professional organization and made that part of our curriculum. At the first meeting that I attended, uh, I was surprised to find that there was uh, very little uh, monetary support of the organization, and so they would ask for donations at the end of the meeting. So, of course, everybody would either write a check, uh, lay a dollar bill, $10 bill, $20 bill on the table, but then they always wanted us to empty the change out of our purses. And so that's what we did. We piled it on the table, and then we counted it. And this was one of the ways that we paid for our legislative uh, fees and uh, were able to... Um, uh, support our organization. From that original class of nine, three of us became uh, presidents of the Nebraska Nurse Practitioners. Those were uh, Beth Henson, Joni Smith, and myself. Many of the other classmates uh, held leadership positions as secretary, treasurer. Uh, they also served as committee chairs. The pioneer leaders were not just uh, our role models, they became our dear friends, and they um, they were people that we could uh, count on for advice. They had been through a lot in uh, the process of uh, advancing legislation, and they had uh, lots of wisdom, and they were willing to share that. They were also willing to listen to our frustrations when we were uh, experiencing barriers to practice, and they helped us uh, come up with ideas how to uh, challenge those barriers and to overcome those barriers. There are many moments, uh, as I look back on the history of NNP, that, um, that I am most proud of. I think our legislative efforts uh, that resulted in full practice authority has to be at the top of the list. Our educational offerings that we provide are top notch and we uh, get many compliments each year about the high quality of the education that we provide. And those educational offerings are also uh, providing the CEUs that nurse practitioners need to relicense and recertify. So we feel like we're honoring our mission and our goals of the organization by providing that top quality educational offering. I think the most important thing that I want to convey is the importance of being involved in your professional nurse practitioner organization. It is vital that every nurse practitioner understand how important NNP is to how they practice today. Our founders laid the foundation, but there were many hoops to jump through lots of mountains to climb, and most importantly, hours of work behind the scenes so that finally Nebraska nurse practitioners would have full practice authority. I have always and will continue to believe that it is exciting and empowering to be a member of the Nebraska nurse practitioners. Happy 40th anniversary, Nebraska nurse practitioners. I am Brenda Bergman Evans. I am a registered nurse and have been for 53 years. I also am a nurse practitioner and have been for 25 years and served on the APR and board for 14 years, nine of those as chair. I am joined by Linda Lejeur, who was very prominent in the passing of the legislation LB 414 in 1996. She was then serving as the president of the Nebraska Nurses Association. And I was the Nebraska Nurses Association president, and um, it's ironic that I was there for the birthing of the uh, integrated practice agreement and the uh, board, and I was also there for the, in the, um, I think, 2014, in the uh, effort to uh, get rid of the integrated practice agreement. So, yeah. uh, but, uh, and it was an honor to serve as the um, Nebraska Nurses Association president with the Nebraska nurse practitioners as, as partners in our coalition. And um, uh, then went on to be on the Board of Health and then the Board of Nursing as well as chair of the Board of Health eventually. Ann Ortwick uh, was my partner in crime. She was the executive director of the uh, Nebraska Nurses Association. And I distinctly remember going to the um, family practice convention. And the, the fellow who was the head of the family practice at that time said there were less than 100 nurse practitioners in the state and everybody clapped. And I thought, okay, we've got a big job to do. Nebraska is a unique state having the only unicameral and the only APRN board in the nation. Thanks to the late Charlene Kelly, the APRN board has the honor of holding its full membership in the National Council of State Boards of Nursing with both a voice and a vote. Its purpose is to protect the public by administering and enforcing the APRN Licensure Act to provide for citizen health, safety, and welfare. So did the purpose of the board help us guide the work. Debates were often lively as myths and misconceptions, especially about waivers and the value of practice agreements, were discussed over and over again. 
Fortunately, as we work through Tuckman's forming, storming, norming, performing stages, we were able to learn from each other and find common ground. And the final comment on the work of the APRN board, each of the nine positions needs to be filled by individuals who respect and are interested in promoting the purpose. Our job now is to find them and encourage them to serve when the position opens. I did always wear my little windmill, and I always have worn this all through all the things because I thought the, the windmill is a Nebraska symbol. It symbolizes quiet strength, power, and it, it, it can get a lot done. Yeah. And so I always wore it. And, and it just it was my talisman as, as we went through these, these things. And uh, it helped. It's so disheartening to see many times nurses are the ones that, that kind of stab you in the back. And I, I think I told you about the, you know, I told the nurses one time, I said, I will, I will go, I'll be out in that limb for you. Don't worry about it. I'll be out in the limb. But I better not darn well not see a nurse sawing off the limb that I'm on. Right. Another thing that you brought out is the importance of stories, because I think that is taking it that from the theory to the practice is really important. Authentic voices. Authentic yeah. voices really have carried the day. I remember when we, early on, Mary Kay Maher was working down at, at One World, and she came to a very key uh, hearing. Dr. Peets came that day, and he was a physician, and he really turned the tide because he was a former president of the NMA, and that really pulled folks to our side. But Mary Kay, with this, this patient there, and the child could tell a story that they could not only hear, but they could see. And it was just profound. And I really thought that that turned the tide. We, we eventually got together and we were able to, all four organizations, Nurse Practitioners, Nursing Association, Medical Association, Hospital Association, could go in as, as a uh, united force and be there at the signing which was just phenomenal. Just because you've got the bill passed doesn't mean everything's over. Yeah. The regulations uh, sometimes is where mischief can be done, but sometimes great things can be done. And I know after, after all of this, I was appointed to the Board of Health, which was marvelous because I got to help approve the re regulations for that bill. Yeah. And so it was, it was wonderful. But every time I was on, I was looking at another health-related uh, 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 bill, I could say, well, what about the nurse practitioners? For example, uh, there was a law about who would do physical exams on daycare, child care center children. And it was just listed as a physician. And I would always say, and they got tired of me saying this, but I would say, say well, you know, the nurse practitioner could do that yeah. as well. So then they had to go back in and, and add the nurse practitioner. So uh, Loretta Ford, the 100-year pioneer that started the NP movement, penned the article entitled Fasten Your Seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. She talked about well-familiar themes for, that the Nebraska nurse practitioners have dealt with, the needs to, of setting expectations, being flexible, and challenging opposition to change. She used two quotes that seem fitting for our 40th year celebration. One Tibetan proverb, it is better to live one day as a tiger than 100 years as a sheep. The other from Joan Rivers, life is a movie, you are the star, give it a happy ending. I will add the African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. The successes of the NPs in Nebraska have certainly benefited from the journey together with both nurse practitioners and with our nurse colleagues. Congratulations on the anniversary and journey. We have come far together, but there is still work to be done. I got started with legislative work for nurse practitioners in Nebraska in 2013. And I had heard about the 407 process to present all the facts that substantiate full practice authority for nurse practitioners. In 2012, a group of dedicated nurse practitioners from Nebraska started a 407 review with the Health and Human Services Committee at the Unicameral. This is a very in-depth process where all the facts, the legal facts, the, the research that would back up the safety of nurse practitioners having full practice authority. In late 2013, it was voted on by the committee and they had approved that we could go forward with a bill for the unicameral. This was sponsored by Senator Sue Crawford and was introduced in the 2014 legislative session. We went through it, it went really well, and on the very last day of session, the then governor vetoed our bill and the next day we could not have further work to continue the work for that. So we had to regroup, get another bill written. Senator Sue Crawford was again our sponsor. And it was like a silver lining that it had been vetoed because that year, every office that I went to at the Capitol building, they said, oh, remember, we remember that. That was really underhanded. He should never have done that. 
And what happened was it made the 2015 legislative session go so well that it passed like in five minutes of vote. And we were all just kind of stunned and it was almost unanimous. So in 2015, Nebraska nurse practitioners won full practice authority. We were the 22nd state in the United States to do so. And we were really, really proud and thrilled and knew that it was important for us to continue to protect that full practice authority so that we would never have the chance of having somebody fight against it. And to this day, we still very closely guard full practice authority. It made me very proud. In 2014, I was co-chair of the legislative Co committee. And then in, since 2015, I've been the chair of the legislative committee for Nebraska nurse practitioners. I've been a nurse practitioner since 2007. And I think I got involved with Nebraska nurse practitioners in about 2011 or 2012. I remember attending a one of the annual conferences and they announced they needed some volunteers for committees and that's when my journey began. I've served on the public relations committee, I was the chair of the legislative committee and I also was on the nomination committee and I've now served in the president role for two terms. I'll be ending that soon. I think my vision for advanced practice education um, involves a few things. I think as far as organizational growth, I want every nurse practitioner to be a member of Nebraska nurse practitioners. I think it's very important that new graduates and seasoned professionals and everybody understand that without their support, we're not able to do what we've been doing, which is to provide legislative efforts and advocacy efforts here in Nebraska and provide continuing education and just be a voice um, at the table in Nebraska. The proudest moment I've had serving in a leadership role with Nebraska nurse practitioners has been the passage of our full practice authority bill in 2015. We worked really, really hard in 2014 to get it passed, and it was um, not passed because of a pocket veto. And so we came back even stronger in 2015. We gathered more support. We showed data and evidence that nurse practitioners do provide high quality care. And the legislative body listened, and we met with them, and, they, and we helped them understand why it was necessary for this change to happen. We are a volunteer-run organization, and, and we've done it for 40 years. And so... I am really honored to have been a part of this organization for the past 10 years or so. Um, it is a little bit mind boggling that it's been around for 40 years and that we've been fighting for 40 years to get the nurse practitioner role in Nebraska. Um, I am so grateful for all of those that came before me that put their pennies in the bucket and helped get it going. And I hope that I've done them proud by continuing to carry on their legacy and do the things that needed to be done to make sure that this organization continues on for another 40 years. I think it's really important that we have a voice here in Nebraska and that we use that voice to promote our profession and to elevate our communities and to take care of patients. And I'm just really glad that I got to be here and that I got to be a part of this journey.